All right, so I'm here at the boat ramp, ready to take off, but I'm still waiting for my fishing buddy, uh, Javier, an old school paintball friend of mine. I haven't seen him in a, in a few years since uh, the paintball team we played on together broke up. But I figure since I got you here, let me show you a little bit about the boat. It's uh, probably the first time you're seeing this. So I got the uh, Pelican Bass Raider 10E. It's a few years old, but it's in great shape. I know it looks a little dirty right now. It's because it's been put to good use over the last week. But um, it's a 10 foot wide uh, pontoon boat, mini skiff, mini boat, whatever you want to call it. Um, it came, we bought it for $900 and it came with the regular seats. It came with the trolling motor. It already had four of these Scotty mounts put on the, on the edges there. So, and it came with the battery. So what we did, uh, we haven't upgraded the trolling motor yet because it works but we're gonna get a 50 pound thrust instead of the 30 that, it, that it's running on. But, uh, and we also bought a secondary battery uh, that way. If one dies, we can use the other one and we can also alternate them to get longer life out of them. So um, it also came with an anchor, of course. So, um, but yeah, this is the boat right here. Uh, I, I changed out the two seats. Uh, I got one of the fold back seats, uh, kind of a taller back and the low back for the front of the boat. I like it like that because when it's folded and I'm sitting uh, right here, I can use that as a table. Um, so that was my train of thought there. Uh, eventually we will be building a casting deck up front uh, and some storage in back here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's it guys. I'm just waiting for my bud to, to get here. I'm probably going to throw a couple off the shore right over here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, catch you in a minute. So yeah, it's just this whole inner area here in front of this weed line i don't know that any spot is better than the other they're just swimming back and forth the whole area wow i've never been on top of so many bass at once coming for it you ready i know i see him he just swam right by it <laughs> he, he, he sees you man i'm telling you he thought about it. So sometimes the small ones, they haven't, they haven't seen enough yet. You know, they haven't had enough traumatic experiences that they'll go after anything and, and, and even look you right in the face and, and get it. But the bigger ones, man, no chance. They've been around long enough. You know, they, they've learned a thing or two in their, in their time. Oh yeah. And every once in a while, you'll see them strike it too, man, but very rarely. Look at that. That's, these, sand, these sandy bottom areas right here, you just see so many fish just come by. There's another one again. That's a big bluegill. That's another bass. My God, man. That cast right there is going to get me a bass. Oh, yep, it did. Yes, it did. I did not set that hook strong to get him in the boat. All right. Well, not a big one. We're gonna catch a lot of fish today because we've only been on the water for 20 minutes, and we are uh, we're on the fish. So right, let's get him off. Where's my glove? I'm a pansy fisherman. I use a glove. Surprisingly enough, no one said anything in the comments about that yet about me wearing gloves. Yeah, I just I mean I, why not? It's not hard to do, it's right there. Bam. All right, goodbye, bud. Yeah, like <laughs> I should have had the camera on for that. He did some aerobatics. <laughs> so the, this right here is a hundred dollar reel. Um, honestly, it's, I think it casts the best out of all my reels. Let me give it to you to cast actually so you can see the difference. Oh yeah, jeez. 
ですね<laughs> I, well I said it for my father first who so he wouldn't bird's nest because he is, has a really tough time there you go keep keep the tension on keep reeling him up So that's the difference uh, when he's gonna jump. He's gonna get off because he, you just reeled it in, right? Yeah. yeah. So I said, you feel that bite? Wait a second, and then. So let's get you. Um, tell you what. Take this reel. Reset that worm. And I'll get. I'll get the hook on. Uh, another one here. We'll get going. Try to put that out in a similar spot, huh? Well, that rod. That that rod right there is hundred and ten dollars. I don't know that you need the rod, but get the reel, because you, you would have felt the fish on this rod too. The other thing is a longer rod, you cast further. You've got obviously more. So what's the max that you would recommend for bass? Seven two is a great all-purpose rod. Seven foot's what you're gonna find at Walmart, because it's the most universal. And that's seven one. I throw that with weights. My, my weightless rig right here, this is seven foot seven. And I can throw this really far with no weight on it because I got the extra seven inches. I see we're fishing a little deeper now. This is this is probably the depth of the big ones are are actively eating. It's a little more bearable when you get a bite though, right? <laughs> I had to pull out a lot of slack too to get it down to the depth I needed to get it to. Pull out a little line, I mean. Got him. I am recording on both cameras. So remember I was telling you by the rock wall there's different species of bass? To see the spots on them. Oh, actually, that might be like a hybrid kind of. Uh, but yeah, so typically you got some more defined spots on his midsection than that. Okay, buddy, hold on. Just turn the trolling motor off. I jacked you. You're not going anywhere. That was a good hook set. I'm stepping on my glove. There it is. Shut the hook slime around. Okay, there you go. That's number three, I think. When you set them like this, sometimes they jump. No, he just went right down. <laughs> Polar opposite of jump. He dove. So I started that one out deeper and I brought it back in. Need a net for that. Keep them on. Woo! There you go. I want to make sure you get him in the boat. That's all. Didn't mean to grab him from you. There you go, Javi. That's a big one, dude. We're gonna get the scale for him. Do you want? Do you want a glove? Uh, sure. Dude, Javi. There you go, man. That's the biggest one. Virgin waters. First cast in the virgin waters, dude. Uh, I was talking to. Yeah, pit, pit, grab really hard in his. Yeah, there you go. And now grab the hook. I'm gonna give you some slack so you can work a little more free with them. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, let me get another glove here, and I'll take it. take it, and that way I can hand them back to you. Yeah, Javi. Uh, this is what I kept referencing, where I want to go to that peninsula. I want to go to that peninsula. All right. Yeah, I'll give you your rod back. Yep. Give me a little more slack. Did you set the hook on him? Because it was, it was in there pretty well. I thought, um, I thought it was a rock too, but I was like, no, it has to be a fish. All right, that's probably about two, two and a half pounds. Yeah, go ahead and release him. 
no, you you can kiss him if you want, but you go ahead and if you if you think he's a little stunned from being out of the water, give him a swirl back and forth before you let him go, but. And he's off. Uh, no, the same worm that you caught him on. All right, so number four. No, that's a, a Texas rigged uh, Gary Yamamoto Senko. Uh, weightless is the is the key there. Slow fall. Actually, what I did with this one, I was telling Javier the the branches on that tree right there. I cast it right under the branches, and the second it hit the water, he went and slammed it. So, unfortunately, you missed uh, the joy I had. I was, Are you kidding me? You know, because he took it the second it hit the water, like he was watching it. So, all right, let's get the release. And he's gone. 